Hello there, my name is Noor Dean and I am a medical student studying here in the UK at the University of East Anglia. Clickbaity title, huh? You haven't seen the last of it. This video isn't going to list all of the good and the bad things about being a doctor, no. This video is about giving you a realistic view into what life as a doctor will really be like. Into the actual path that you take from applying to uni all the way to being a consultant. No one goes into this. It's targeted at people who are thinking of medicine and at people who are in medicine but are uncertain of their future. But the advice in here is timeless and could apply to anybody. The truth is that most people are not cut out for medicine. From day one, you are committing your life to 40 years of work, 40 years of overwhelming selflessness, putting other people before yourself, long night shifts, a lot of studying. Are you sure you want this? In order to do medicine, you have to be selfless, and most cannot do this. The ones that do, well, they're a different breed. They enjoy the hustle, they enjoy the grind, and they're not afraid to commit to something as long as it is worthwhile. Without further ado, here's why you should not do medicine. So the main problem with medicine is that you will not have an easy life. From day one, when you decide you want to do medicine, you have to get good grades. That means that in school, when everyone else is having fun and chilling, you need to be studying. You need to be studying hard. They only want A's and A stars in college. And when you do get to college, well, you've got to do well in your A-level. And let me tell you, A-levels are some of the hardest exams that you will ever do. Doing well in A-levels is difficult. It's gonna mean a lot of sleepless nights, a lot of time spent alone in your room, just studying, not much sport, not much fun. You won't see your friends a lot. And you're not even in medical school yet. And also, don't forget, you have to apply to medicine. Applying to medicine is a different ballpark. Most degrees in the UK, you just make a UCAS application. Generally, you don't need an interview or anything. If you get the grades, then you're in. In medicine, no. Firstly, you've got to pick the right uni, right? All the unis are different. They all teach medicine differently. You have to pick the right uni. And then you have to write your personal statement, which is basically an essay about why you deserve that place that everybody else wants. Hey, forget about it. Hey, forget about it. Then you have to sit your entrance exams. Most unis want you to sit the UCAT, the clinical aptitude test, which tests vocabulary, comprehension, maths, uh, abstract reasoning, uh, situational judgment, and all of that stuff. Other unis want you to sit the BMAT or, or the GAMSAT, which are more focused on biological and scientific knowledge. So you've got all of that to think about. And once you've done all of that, then hopefully your interviews should be coming in. And you're only allowed to apply to four places maximum. So you could get four interviews at four different universities now interviews are a different ball game you have to prepare for interviews you can't just rock up there try to waffle your way through them no you have to know the uni you have to know a little bit about the NHS and about medicine you have to be able to have a conversation with the interviewer resources lady oh, oh you know think... it, it's actually it's Pam I'm sorry well Pam no you know the position you're going for, a lot of people want to be in your shoes, so they want to make sure that you're up to the task. Do you get what I'm trying to say? You have to be up for it, so you need to prepare for those interviews. And once you've got your interviews, congratulations. Hopefully you've got a place in med school. Now you're in medical school, you won't be a normal student. No, medicine is different to all other degrees. The five year length is because you have so much content that you need to cover. And it's not like other degrees where if you learn something in first year, you don't really need it in second year, no. Whatever you learn in first year, you're examined on in second year. And whatever you learn in first and second year, you're examined on in third year, all the way to fifth year. The content gets harder. First year is usually the easiest. In second year, a little bit harder. Third year is where it climaxes. You, you have the most difficult modules and really you have no life at all. Fourth year, it relaxes a bit, but you're spending most of your time in hospital. You have modules to do, but most of the time you're at placement. And fifth year, you're basically a junior doctor. You're at placement most of the time. You're not even a uni student anymore. What is sleep? really. All of this time you have OSCEs which are clinical tests where you have to perform clinical examinations and be graded on them. You have written tests which are single best answer so they'll give you multiple options and you have to pick the one that is most correct. 
Yes, exams are really quite hard in medical school. And if you have managed to pass medical school, congratulations to you. But your training is not over yet. No, you still have two more years of foundation training. And this goes for any doctor in the UK. You have foundation year one, year two. You are put on random wards and you have to put together all the skills that you learned over the last five years into these two years. Those two years are usually the hardest ones of all your training. Because because you're sat there doing night shifts, 12 hours at a time, sometimes even 14 hours. You always get the worst jobs to do because the qualified doctors are too qualified to do them. So what do you think, Perry? I'll tell you there, Bobo, either this kid has a light bulb up his butt or his colon has a great idea. And so those two years will be some of the most hectic of your life. And after those foundation years are done, congratulations, you are now a junior doctor. Oh, just savor the feeling. But wait, you're not done yet because now you have to specialize. Now you have to go figure out what you want to do in which area of medicine you want to work in. You have to write your CV, writing all your accomplishments. So when you apply for jobs, they can rate you against everybody else. And you have to do all these extra courses and what you want to do will decide exactly how much work you're gonna have to do. For example, if you want to be a neurosurgeon, good luck with that. The College of Neurosurgeons only accepts around 20 people per year. And if you want to be an ophthalmologist, it sounds great, but you're looking at about nine more years until you're a fully qualified consultant ophthalmologist. So the specialization route is long and this is the reality. This is the pathway of medicine all the way from doing your GCSEs at around 16 years old to when you're a consultant, a fully qualified consultant. And did you think you were going to be earning big bucks? Absolutely not. Foundation year doctors earn around 26k per year. It's only as a consultant where you start earning the big bucks. Your salary will increase year by year by year don't forget that in this country we have something called taxes the tax rate in the UK is fairly high so even if you're a consultant and you have all this money unfortunately you will be taxed at around 40% of it you're not really gonna enjoy your money it's fine isn't it yeah I don't mind giving half my money away that I worked for 40 years to get that's just life that's the pathway of the generic doctor this is what you want right this is what you've been waiting for all your life now it would be a very good opportunity right now to say this is only the generic pathway this is kind of the main path of being a doctor like when you think doctor this is the path that most medical students think of not every doctor takes this exact pathway the thing about medicine and this is really important is that you are being trained in a field so vast you can really get away with doing anything at all anything to do with health wellness diet supplementation you can do any of it the majority of people, they're happy taking the generic pathway. I have absolutely no problem with that. If this is what you want, then this is perfect for you. Just apply. Make sure you study hard and apply. But for someone like me, I'm not going to do that. I saw no future for myself in medicine if that was going to be my only option. What does this mean? As a medical student, I can safely tell you this is not your only option. So my father, he took the generic route. He's now a very successful orthopedic surgeon, mashallah. And he really loves his job. He, he loves it. He loves his job. I can only pray that I will love my job the same way my dad loves his job. Unfortunately, I could not love that job how he loves his job. We're different people. It's just not me. And that's what put me off medicine so much because I didn't like his work. I didn't like that he came in late every day. He had to go on call and he couldn't have his own freedom. I don't like that he was a salaried worker. And those things put me off medicine. But after doing some digging of my own, I realized that this isn't the only way. There are other ways to succeed as a doctor. There are other career pathways as a doctor that nobody talks about. One day I will make a video talking about them. But for now, we're gonna wrap this video up with explaining exactly why I chose medicine. If I knew all of this, if all of this was such an issue for me, why would I choose medicine? I love medicine. I enjoy learning it. I think it's fascinating to understand what's going on inside you, to understand how it can go wrong. It's like engineering, but with people. Do you know what I mean? But I could not learn medicine, how medicine is taught. What I mean by that 
is that I needed a uni that would offer me the chance to work with patients from the first year. And this is what I got at UEA. It is a fantastic uni if you're trying to be a doctor. And modern science is fascinating and I want to be at the forefront of that. I want to be one of the innovators in this field. I don't just want to be another soldier, another pawn on the chessboard. I want to be the one making the decisions. Does this sound familiar? Because if it does, you're going to want to listen on. I want to be a doctor on my own terms. I want to be my own boss. I don't want to be a salaried worker for the rest of my life. I want to make my own money. That is something that drives me. I want to be the sole person in the world that is building my destiny. I don't want to be building someone else's destiny. My plan is to follow through with medicine and seek out any opportunities I can. Business opportunities, this YouTube channel, any research that crops up at uni. I'm going to take all of it because you don't know when that's going to come and help you out in the future. Give me a lever long enough and a fulcrum on which to move it and I will move the world. Archimedes said that. Now I'm saying it. This is the mindset you need to have to succeed, not just as a medical student, but in life in general. And all of this is why I chose medicine despite the apparent negatives. I realized that with the medicine degree, I can do anything. I can work in digital health. I can work in the fitness industry. And I can perform surgery, deliver babies. I can do anything, anything at all. There is nothing in the world that's stopping you as a doctor. Health is one of the biggest, most profitable niches in the world. If you guys want it, I will make a video detailed exactly what all the different paths are that you can take other than being a doctor in medicine but for now this was just an introduction to that sort of thing so what about you what's your reason for choosing medicine and for the rest of you well what's stopping you let me know down in the comments that's all from me today if you've watched this far don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already my name is Nuruddin and I'll see you later